What's up, brother? I love this. You're in from Beantown, and Mike is uh, is Beantown. Um, that's where I know him. He's my uh, my um, college roommate's younger brother, all grown up. There he is. Hey, hey. What's up, brother? How are you, man? We're going to have, oh, there's Becca, my manager. I just told her about this. We're going to, oh, there's my mom. Basically, I'm, I'm dying laughing because this whole thing, it's like going live. It's like, but, but now going from the 10,000 no's, there will be like, you know, two people on here or something like that. It, it doesn't matter. It'll, it'll save people will watch it later. So you can no see worries. how many people watch later. No I feel worries, like. Man. Good to see your face. How you doing? Good, good to see you too. Good to see you too. Yeah. With, uh, what's going on? How's the family? By the way, um, Becca, anybody else, don't feel bad if you don't want to stick around. This thing gets taped. It gets saved here for 24 hours. And we're just starting to do them from. 10,000 no's because on my personal feed, we would just get like the whole time it scrolls up with comments and it would just be uh, a welcome to create us to grow. Is that, I think that's Chris. I think that's my daughter's volleyball coach. Okay. I hope I got that right. Anyway, it, the, on the other one, the, the, the scroll will come up and it's all Teen Wolf people like, is there a season seven? I'm like, I don't know. I haven't talked to anybody. <laughs> So I'm like, we're just going to do this from, from 10,000 no's. If there's less people, there'll be people that really want to be here for this. Right. Awesome. So, um, awesome. Tell, tell me what's been going on. Tell everybody a little bit about, you know, who you are, like kind of what you're doing and all that stuff. Well, what I'm doing here is um, my name is Michael, Michael Boyle. I'm a therapist. I live in Taos, New Mexico. I, I specialize in working with trauma, PTSD. Um, among other things, but really that's where, you know, I feel passionate about and, and talking about learning, learning ways to optimize the health of the nervous system, nervous system. So not just to heal, not just to survive, but to thrive, uh, despite difficult circumstances, which is why the message tends to fit in quite well with your show. And, uh, you know, had a, had a blast doing your podcast a couple months back. And, um, but yeah, I just, I just felt like, I think this is a time when all of us are trying to look to well, what can we do to make a difference and times like this bring out either the best in people or the worst in people. I'm hoping to focus on bringing out the best and um, and I figure I have some tools that I can share with people that would be a benefit um, from my work with people that have been through, you know, traumatic experience and have healed through traumatic experience. I think it's pretty relevant right now. So uh, I just wanted to wanted to share it with whoever's whoever wants to listen. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and so a couple of things just fired into my mind as you were talking. One, I did one of these yesterday with uh, Matt Long, who was also on my podcast, who also went through, you know, went to hell and back, basically. And and you talk to someone like that, like that's that's what he's built for. And ironically, through this whole thing, I've been getting because of the podcast, getting requests to go talk because that's what it's all about. And you do see there's like a uh, an interest in people going, how do you deal with how do, how do you deal with all of this? Um, how have you se how have you seen it in your in your practice? Have things changed as a result of this, or were you already kind of already so deep in it that this doesn't even really affect it? No, it, it changes because you know almost everyone that I'm working with, and and I actually, in case any of them are listening or will listen, you know, I, I say this as a, and I've actually said this to a lot of the people that I'm working with as a way for them to kind of cut themselves some slack, everyone I'm working with has taken steps backwards in terms of, um, in terms of just regression of symptoms and, and just having a hard time. And I say that that is true of myself as well. I see it in my wife, I see it in my friends. I mean, people are, people are struggling. Um, you know, even, even, myself i consider myself to have a pretty good self-care routine and a pretty healthy person and i've had my moments of like claustrophobia freak out a little depression a little you know yeah. frustration you know barking at the kids a little bit more than i want to and you know all these things so these are i just want to normalize all that too for people and to to say you know none of us are alone in that journey and so but the more we can be deliberate about using some tools to to kind of help ourselves have a better quality of life within the experience that, you know, we're here for a while still, I think. And yeah. um, so that's, that's kind of the name of the game, but yeah, people are having a hard time and I, those hard times, it, it seems like it, it exposes, which makes sense. It exposes whatever weakness is already there. So there's, it's like pressure and 
if there's right. pressure against the dam, it's going to break where there's already kind of a, a crack. Um, so if it's addiction, well, then people are going to addiction. If it's, you know, if it's uh, anxiety, people are feeling a lot of anxiety. If it's anger, a lot of anger. Um, and so, um, yeah, let's just, you know, see, see what we can do to help a little bit and offer some resources. Yeah, what's the what's the physical layout there? I feel like so you're in Taos, New Mexico, right? Yeah, so a lot of space is how I imagined we're, it. We're quite we're quite lucky, <clears throat> and uh, we're quite lucky, and I remember that on a regular basis because yeah, a lot of space, a lot of physical beauty. Um, actually, Taos Pueblo here is is one is the oldest extant native population, native village. It's been people have been living there for over twelve hundred years. And that's largely due to geographical kind of isolation, which is actually pretty advantageous for us in terms of COVID right now. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's only uh, thir 15 cases in our county, um, so so there's a different you know it's different in term in, in that regard. And so our heart goes out to people that are in cities and people that are in high rises and. Yeah. You know, the thing that's really breaking my heart to think about is kids that, you know, there's a lot of kids in this country where school is a sanctuary, you know, where they don't live in safe homes and to right. be quarantined with, you know, someone who's, you know, drinking too much or, you know, domestic violence and things like that is an absolute nightmare. So, you know, I don't think that those people are necessarily going to be listening to the show today, but right. my heart goes out to you. Right. I mean, that's kind of the thing I've talked to a bunch of people about is there's like a, for me, and I'm, I'm like putting it into this kind of stuff, uh, it, because I feel like, okay, stay in my lane, do what I can do to t try to contribute in, in some little way. Um, oh, that's my sister right there, School for Joy. Those are the people I'm worrying about and praying for. Yeah, trying to do the, the, you know, do what I can, but then also there's like a guilt factor of, you know, oh, you know, well, Bernsey, you know, we've got Bernsey, trauma surgeon in Boston, and I've been texting back and forth with him since before, really, when I was in New York in the middle of, it was like the middle of February, I think, um, and I was coming back for my daughter's, like, a daddy-daughter dance, and this stuff started to come out, but it wasn't really, people weren't sure what it was, and I was like, I texted him, I'm like, do you think I, I could fly, what do you think, and you know, at that point, he was like, we have to see how this goes. It could be really bad, or maybe it's going to be a blip on the radar. But I've always thought, he said, you know, with his Navy SEAL background and everything, he's like, I've always said, it's not going to be terrorism that, you know, brings us down. It's going to be a virus. He's like, that being said, who knows? Let's chart it. And then, like, two weeks later, back and forth. Now, every time I'm back and forth with him, he and Stephanie, his wife, are in the ICU. He just texted me yesterday. So, I've got this feeling of like, I'm like, Bernsey and others like him are, you know, dealing with the stuff that I just will see when I happen to go look at an article, which I've right. kind of shut myself off from a little right. bit because I felt like I was going down a rabbit hole. Yep. And so there's like, a, there's a guilt feeling of like, I'm not doing anything. And then like, I'm doing this kind of thing. And I'm like, you know, you get feedback that makes you feel like it's helping and then you also feel like what you know i'm an actor what yeah. am i doing here <laughs> like, yeah yeah you know and you also like what you're saying you have these people that really need to hear stuff they're they don't necessarily have a phone they don't have internet they don't have it so they're not getting access to it so it's a really weird yeah. time in that way and then same as you we have space here we've got physical beauty the ocean's not too far away and so it's kind of fine for us, you know, knock on wood for the moment until, you know, unless somebody gets infected, but there's this weird, I, I feel like a weird thing in the air where you're, you want to be involved. You also just want to keep your family safe. Yeah. And that's also good for society. Yeah. And like what to do. So how have you kind of, um, how, how have you approached that? Like within your work, are you even talking about all of this? I'm, I'm imagining yeah. that, that, that you've got to be in some yeah. way. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm talking about it with the people that I work with. And I've also started doing free classes on, on Facebook Live. Just, you know, again, partly because I'm just trying to feel, feel useful. I want to do something that's free. I want to do something that can reach a wider audience. Um, not, that, not that I have a, you know, a monstrous following or anything like that. But, 
you know, I just, um, <clears throat> so yeah, addressing, addressing it directly. And, you know, a lot of it, actually, some of the way I've been working with people has changed a little bit, because it used to be, I was kind of a stickler for like, we're going to just do practical stuff, and I'm going to teach you stuff. And, and now there's a little bit more like, we're just going to gab a little bit here, because you're alone in a and you're alone in a room by yourself and right. don't have anyone to talk to. And I'm in some ways, one of the only, per one of the only person that people have to talk to. Wow. Um, and so isolation is brutal, you know? And so next time, <laughs> next time you're feeling a little aggravated with your wife or something, you know, oh, maybe yeah. just remember, I'd much rather not be alone. You know, uh, it's really hard to be alone 24 seven day in and day out. Um, and so to have one person to talk to one hour a week is like shooting an elephant with a BB gun. So sometimes I'm just gabbing with people more than I normally would. And that's just what's appropriate right now. Um, but then the classes that I'm trying to do, and I'm going to, I'm doing a daily meditation every morning, just a little guided meditation for people to can hop on and just start their day in a good way. And um, a class once a week, every Sunday evening, just to maybe give people a sense of feeling connection, get some positive input in their, in their social media feeds. And yeah. 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 Well, look, if you could see on the bottom right now, see how it says she man, yeah. uh, 85, this kind of thing definitely helps people. So that's, yeah. that's Paul. He's one of the guys on the gang unit in Boston that I got to you know, ride with. He was, we, uh, see, I got the little plug for city on the hill there. These guys right. were awesome. And he and I have, have kind of connected and stayed connected and, He's, he's saying that he's in Boston, you know, uh, people have been giving that response. And then I'm laughing, like, you know, just full disclosure, I don't even know if you guys can see these numbers, but it's like, there's eight people here. Mm -hmm. But you know what, eight people here actually listening, I would do this on my personal feed, and you'd have a lot more, but they're shooting up things about Teen Wolf. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I'm like, if, here's my thought. This is the, this is the good news. If you want to flip this whole thing around. I never did, like you said, I don't know how to do this live. I've never done it. Yeah. Like up until a week ago, I had done this, I think once in my life, maybe twice, where I had a guest here and he knew what he was doing and he, and he set it up and it that didn't work because there was some kind of echo, right? Mm -hmm. Now, since this has happened, the ego goes out the door and you're yeah. just like, okay, how do I help? And yeah. so now I'm on here and I'm going, I don't give a shit. You know, there's eight people watching, but... Yeah. If it helps, if it helps, what is, what, what is Teen Wolf? Teen Wolf yeah. is a show on MTV like, that the young when he said that, love. Not the Michael J. Fox one. It's an it's a MTV one that I was the dad on, and it was like a big hit for a certain demographic. So apparently I have a lot of uh, females between 18 and 24 in, in South America that like to post about it. Uh, she, made, she made 85. It's definitely a demographic. When he said it earlier, I was just going to let it go. I was like, Teen Wolf, that's still a thing? Like, what the yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's just, I know he watches. He's, he's a rabid fan. Um, no, but anyway, like, now it's kind of like, look, there's, there's, if there are seven or eight people, I'm just thinking right now, my sister is watching this. And as you're talking, I'm like, she does tapping meditation. And I'm, I'm going, <laughs> oh, you guys should connect and do this. Mm -hmm. Even if, this, this is the new thing that I've seen. And I kind of did it with the podcast and now the podcast has grown. But in the beginning, certainly like there weren't tons of people listening, but you'd still get emails. And if you get one person, you know, you turn one person, yeah. that's kind of worth it. And actually the guy, you know, the guy, John Gordon, who was a guest of mine, I'm just mm -hmm. saying someone else who just joined who knows John Gordon, but his deal, he's, you know, written like 20 books, a bunch of them are bestsellers. He told me a story about like going out in the beginning with his first book, uh, The Energy Bus, and they put him on like they called it a, like a book tour. He's like, the book tour was literally like I'd show up in a city and he's, his name's John Gordon. He's like, I showed up and like five people showed up and they showed up because they thought I was Jeff Gordon, the race car driver. But his nice. thing was always like, just get one person, you know, if you can get one person to, to, to buy in, that's a start. And what he did, he ended up getting, I forget who it was. And actually, uh, maybe my buddy here, you see the no quit living. He may know he could pop it up if he wants. There was one coach. It wasn't Dabo Sweeney, but it was like, it was some huge, like Herm Edwards or someone like that bought into what he was doing. 
and then got him out to everybody else. Right he's on. huge now. Like he he goes and and coaches like all these major yeah. sports teams. So it's like, you know, you're kind of in the middle of nowhere doing this. And right. I, I'm mentioning this to anybody who's watching because when you came on, so just to give our history, yeah, my one of my college roommates, Chris Boyle, um, from Boston. We were at BC, and Mike was, what are you, seven or eight years younger than us? Seven like years younger, yeah. Okay, so he would come. He was the younger brother. And it was like, there's Boyle's younger brother. Flash forward 20 years or whatever, and he's gone on this crazy journey. You should could definitely go listen to the interview I did with him. Goes, takes him to Thailand, takes him back, all this stuff. And we connected on the phone. We had, I was right out in my neighborhood walking around with him talking for like an hour. I was like, holy crap, this is an amazing conversation. I wish we recorded this. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, I don't know if we're going to capture this magic again for the actual interview. So we go to do it. And Mike goes, well, I don't know. You've had some big guests. And I don't know. There's like some famous people. I was like, don't worry about it. Your story's awesome. Your story's awesome. Your episode is one of the most listened to episodes that I have. I mean, I, I find that awesome because that, that means that people really care about the actual content stories and the content. Right. And so the rest of that stuff, you can't control that. But if you have something good, eventually the right people are going to come to it and help with the infrastructure part and get it out there. But eventually that it's going to explode. And you're one of them. I mean, I, you know, I, I was on that call with you and you, the stuff that you talked about and where you've gone in your journey is amazing. And, and because you kind of went through some hard stuff, you coming out the other side makes it that much more powerful. And yeah. so I would say to you and, and say to, I know you're already doing this, but anybody who's listening, it's like, whatever you're doing, whatever stage you're in, if you're trying to throw some good out there, just keep doing it because Really, it just does take one person to kind of get behind you. The right person gets behind you and pumps it out. Mm -hmm. And and even if that doesn't happen, if you change the lives of of three people, two people, even one person, isn't that kind of amazing? Because yeah. who are they going to go change? Yeah. You know? Right on so yeah. um, what about <clears throat> techniques? Anything specific? You know, I know you have like, specific things that you do with clients anything sure. you can like talk to i'm just thinking i think my sure. mom is listening and like i'm thinking sure. by herself like what are things that you would you would say to people that are uh sure. on their own yeah so quick you know quick and easy version is is if we're if we're in a state of distress <clears throat> you know Basically, the body only has three options to go to when we're in a we're, when we're in the survival mode. Our nervous system, our there's an alarm switch. The alarm switch goes on, and we go into fight, flight, or freeze, which is something that maybe people have heard about. But I think it's a little bit more, you know, to make that a little bit more real. Fight is anger, flight is fear, freeze is depression. So we all vacillate from anger to fear to depression, anger, fear, depression all the time. Now, when we're in that mode what we're doing, what we're basically are, according to our neurology, according to our biology is there's a tiger in the room and there's an immediate threat. And so because there's a tiger in the room and there's an immediate threat, I'm going to shut down all of the other things that are not essential. I'm going to shut down my digestion. I'm going to shut down. I'm going to shut down, um, you know, growing my hair and nails. I'm going to shut down healing a cut. I'm going to shut down my immune system. I'm going to shut down fighting the common cold. I'm going to shut down my access to happiness, to creativity, to, to higher, higher rational thinking, all of these things when we just go into normal states of distress. So it's really useful to be able to learn how to turn off that alarm switch really quickly and turn on the thriving part of our nervous system, which is related to resting, digesting, healing, feeling, connecting, loving, feeling joy, feeling uh, inspiration, creativity, all of these things that are involved with the parasympathetic nervous dominance. And so the easiest, most simple way that I've learned how to really accomplish switching off the alarm switch, the survival part, and turning on the thriving part, it has, is related to the breath. And every single time we inhale, 
we activate the sympathetic nervous system, which is related to the survival part of the brain. Every single time we exhale, we activate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is related to the thriving part of the brain. So logically then, if you train yourself to breathe out for longer than you breathe in, you're gonna become more parasympathetic dominant and you are going to access the healing and thriving parts of your nervous system more regularly. And so you could say, train yourself to breathe in for a one to two ratio. For every three seconds you breathe in, you breathe out for six. But that's even a little bit more, that's kind of a general thing, but a very specific thing that you can do. And it's, uh, it looks a little funny and, or it sounds a little funny. And it's, you know, you could call it the Darth Vader breath or the, the, ha, the fog that you make to fog your uh, glasses. You would say, so you just breathe in and then So that was maybe about one and a half seconds in, about 15 I, I seconds. I was like, out. oh shit, he, he froze up, he froze up. <laughs> <laughs> I got no connection. <laughs> so, so, so the more you spread out, the more you spread out that ratio, the more you, you know, two seconds in, 15 seconds out, two seconds in, 20 seconds out, and you'll get it with practice, then you're gonna be, get into a very relaxed state. Your mind is gonna quiet down, with that particular sound that you're making, now this brings in a little bit of stump up from Chinese medicine, which maybe you're not into, maybe you don't believe in or whatever, but it's related to the energy of the heart and the energy of overwhelm. And so what I find is when I do that sound for five or six breaths, all the tension in my chest just melts. And I didn't even know that I had it. I didn't even know that I was locked up in here until it releases. Then I'm like, oh, wow, that feels better. And so, and then my mind will quiet down and I'll actually be in a state that is productive to be in. Because the fact of the matter is, is if you're quarantined, even though there's a lot of awful things going on out there, if you're not infected and you're quarantined and you're in your house, it is counterproductive to be in a state of survival. In fact, it's going to dampen your immune system, not to mention your quality of life. And if you're in a state of thriving in your nervous system, it's gonna increase your immune system, it's gonna increase your access to happiness and peace, your creativity, et cetera. So, so it's just, it's very simple. And what you do is you just practice over time, getting that exhale longer and longer and longer through, not through effort, not through struggle, but just through allowing it and softening and relaxing Another thing that you could do, which is very same effect, but has a little bit different physiological effect inside, it act actually activates the antihistamine system, so it can be good for allergies, is and just hum. And that also is gonna really extend the length of the exhale, but the humming actually is good for your nasal passages and things like that. So, um, so that's just like, don't excuse simplicity with lack of profundity because that is an amazing exercise. I do it five or 10 times a day. If I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm nervous about something, I do that, you know, five, six, seven, 10 times and I fall back to sleep. It's just a really, really easy, uh, easy way to help yourself. That's awesome. I mean, that, that's, you know, that's something that's so great because it's, it's accessible to everybody everybody anytime you can't overdo it you can't hurt yourself yeah there's no it's only only benefit can come from playing with that yeah thanks for for sharing that that that's what's so great and i get you know i, I know there aren't a ton of people on here but that, go follow follow mike because he's got great tips like this and i and as you can see and i don't i mean i i feel like it's it's cool for me to have you and just you know there's a couple more people that know about what you're doing and these exercises that I love the fact that you're just saying like how simple it is. I've, I've said this several times in the last couple of weeks. One of the things I was blown away by what I think it was the first COVID related piece of content that I heard. I was still in New York and it was, it was a clip from Joe Rogan talking to someone at the CDC or somebody who was kind of an expert and had been chasing this for years. And they went through this whole conversation and Rogan is like very, you know, 
brass tacks, like, let's just get to it. And he's like, okay, what, what can we do to help ourselves? And out of everything this guy said, he was like, eat well, sleep well, and exercise. And Rogan's like, that really? That, that's all you got for me? And he's like, yeah, just like keep your immune, immune system boosted. And it's all of the things that you're supposed to be doing in peacetime, you're doing in wartime too. And it's like, it, it's not rocket science. It's just so funny to hear that this is your specialty and your advice is like, breathe. Breathe, man. It's, it's, it's such a basic thing and we all forget it. I mean, I'm, I'm aware of it as an actor. A lot of the stuff you're talking about, it reminds me of things that we'll do as actors. Even, even the, the vibration, like before, if you're doing a play, or it's like, you know, a lot of like, and like, ah, and all of that to get your, your body ready. Mm -hmm. um, so there are things that I have access to that I'm, I have it in my mind, but I'll catch myself not breathing during a day. All of a sudden you just kind of catch yourself or, you know, very shallow breaths and you have to be conscious of it. Yeah. And that's yeah. with me having not your training, but a different kind of training that totally. has it. Oh, so think of the people that have no exposure to this, totally. not even aware that they're not breathing. Totally. And here's the thing here, here's a little, you know, to add just a little flavor to the nerve, to the, to the neuroscience education is the brain is going to default to survival mode because the brain doesn't, its priority is for us to survive. It doesn't care about us being happy, but we might care about us being happy. So the, the brain will default to survival mode and that is the automatic reactive pattern. So it'll just go into what is called, it'll go into autopilot. And when your brain is an autopilot, meaning you're, if you're not conscious in making a deliberate choice, your brain is an autopilot. When your brain is an auto, autopilot, all it can do is what it's been programmed to do. If you think about it, literally an autopilot in a plane, it can't think creatively, it can't do something different, it can only do what's in its program. You know, maybe when artificial intelligence starts to get a little bit more savvy, but, but for now, a, pro, a computer thing can only do what it's been programmed to do. That's the same way with the survival part of the brain. So this is why we repeat the same patterns and habits over and over and over again. And so, especially if you have a history of trauma, depression, anxiety, anger, addiction, et cetera, if you're not deliberately choosing, then you're gonna reenact those patterns over and over and over again. And you're gonna shallow breathe or whatever. And so whatever it is, so it's like you have to, you can rest assured that you're in your program, you're in your conditioning, you're reacting the past if you are not ma consciously making a deliberate choice. So if you're not pausing, stopping, and making a deliberate choice, you are reacting. And so I talk a lot about creative versus reactive. You're, you know, look at the word react. It is to react an old part, an old role, an old conditioning. And speaking to an actor, to be creative is to say, who is this new character that I, wh what's the future that I'm trying to develop? And, and think of it like being an improv actor, right? You're an improv actor. You, ha you wanna stay true to your character in the future that you haven't yet memorized all the lines, all the, all the emotions, all the sentiments, and you don't know what other lines people are gonna throw at you and you still have to stay true to character. That's being creative. That's bringing your future into the present as opposed to reacting the past over and over and over again. That's saying, who do I want to be? And then acting that way now, regardless of what other lines people throw at you. So that's so awesome. Have, I love that. Yeah. So you got to deliberately choose and choose to bring the future you into the present instead of the past you into the present. Yeah. And I just want to say something. That, well, by the way, someone uh, sometimes when I do those breathing exercises, I feel like I can't get enough air into my lungs. Is that normal? A little bit and I, what i find that when that happens to me is that i just need to like i need to just let my let myself have a few rounds of breath without doing anything just observing my breath so i'm still doing something deliberate and the deliberateness is that i'm just watching and allowing myself to just watch my breath for a few for a few <clears throat> breaths and not trying to do anything there's usually some anxiety when i feel that i feel a little anxious and i feel a little tight muscularly in my chest and so if I just kind of allow that to loosen up a little bit, and then when I'm, what, and then when I go back to the next rounds, I do a few less than I was trying to do. If I was trying to 
extend it to 15 counts. I would just extend it to 10. Make it easy and build upon it being easy. Like the breath work is a subtle thing that you, there's no real place for struggle with it. it that, that's, it's counterproductive. So scale it back, make it easier, and then build up from there. Don't add any extension to it until the, what you add is easy to do and just kind of spontaneous and natural. Hopefully that helps. That's awesome. I saw somebody else when you were talking before said, how many times a day should I do this, these exercises? <laughs> so you said you could do them as many as you can. I do as many, as often as I can remember. Yeah. I do it, you know, as often as I can remember. And so, you know, um, I have, I have, uh, I have a few different times where I designated, where I designate to specifically do it on purpose. But then I have the luxury of working with people and I'm teaching them. So I'm doing it also when right. I'm teaching them. But, but yeah, as often as you can remember, and in the beginning of like my, some of my mind training that I've been, that I've, that I have been doing for many, many years, I would set alarms, anything to wake myself up out of that autopilot. I would, you know, you know, put sticky notes around, although those become, those become obsolete soon because then your mind just attenuates to those. Um, even my, your mind will even attenuate to an alarm and it'll just shut it off unconsciously if it's not random. So there's actually apps for random alarms to go off. Um, that's so yeah. funny. That's, I, I never thought of that, but I have alarms for certain things like this that like just certain like trainings that I've done yeah. and I've noticed, I still left them in my, they come up every day and I'm like, yeah, and I just, yeah. Can, that's so funny. They should be random. Yeah, random. Maybe actually tell us all now. I was going to say, tell me later, but tell us all now. What are some random so, uh, apps that do that? Are, do you know of any? Oh, I don't. I don't know. I haven't used. No them worries. As long we'll do it. If we do it. If we if we come up with it later, we'll throw it in the the, the Instagram story here. Sorry, I cut, I cut you off. But you're, you're saying that the the I totally cut you off. Uh. No, <laughs> did you? I forget. What was no, I even no. saying? <laughs> it's all good. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm seeing someone say, make it easy, tiny habits. And that makes me think of this guy I had on the podcast, Don Saladino. He is this like ridiculously chiseled dude who, who uh, he, he got like Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds and these kinds of people, Blake Lively in shape for movies. And I asked him, how do you, you know, like, what's the best advice you have to transform your body? And he's like, do less. He said, everybody sees me doing this. They see like, videos of me training Hugh Jackman and they come to me and they're like, yeah, I'm going to be here for four hours a day. I'm going to I'm going to eat the protein only and I'm going to measure out my stuff. And he's like, those people burn out. And he's yeah. like, maybe they actually get into great shape. And then two years later, you see them and they're done. He's like, here's my, my story. He's like, if someone comes to me and they tell me they're having four glasses of wine every Friday night, I tell them have three glasses. And I'm like, really? That's it. That's your great advice. He's like, yeah, because you have three glasses. And then you feel a little bit better, you get a better workout. And, and then the next time you're like, oh, I had three, I did it, I stuck to it. Actually, I felt better, I'll have two this time. He's yeah. like, and little do you know, when you, when you, you know, project it down a year from now, you're not drinking anything and you're, going, you're like a beast at the gym because you gradually did it, it became a real yeah. habit as opposed to something that was like totally. placed on you that you felt obligated to do two great resources for that same exact stream is guy BJ Fogg, who, who is the, maybe one of the world's most preeminent behavior scientists. He wrote a book called Tiny Habits. Highly recommend that. I've heard it, never read he, it. He's, yeah. he's all over YouTube and, you know, actually we're on Instagram. His students founded Instagram based on his tiny habits recipe. Um, and and so they were, Got, they, there were guys that took his class at Stanford and they created an Instagram there. Wow. Um, and then the other thing is uh, convict conditioning. I'm not going to remember the dude's name right now, but speaking of, we're all kind of in isolation. This guy has a bit of um, six exercises that you build up that are body weight only that you build up in this very incremental way. And he was talking about, and he's talking about how like you create this kind of superhuman strength when you actually develop your, your nervous system strength as opposed to your muscular strength and like the very tiny kind of build up little bit by little bit and it's it's push-ups it's pull-ups it's uh paul wade is his name paul wade. so that's a, that's another great resource which is perfect for this time my wife and i 
are actually both doing the convict conditioning process during this quarantine time. And it's, it's awesome. It's so funny you say that. And I think we're going to get, I think we get cut off at 30 minutes. So it might, I don't know what the deal is, but or 40 minutes. So if we get cut off, thank you everybody for being here. But so funny, you mentioned the convict thing. I got to get that because I, one of my favorite movies, I always refer to it as Shawshank Redemption. Mm -hmm. And I think the, and, and also Cool Hand Luke, both prison movies. And when this whole thing hit, my immediate go-to, I was like, okay. And I've had someone on the podcast, this guy, Rob Groupie, who went to prison for seven years and he came out, came out a lot stronger than he went in. My immediate thing was like, okay, they're confining me. I'm, in, I'm here in you know prison. What can I do to build myself up to come out stronger on the other side? That, I just go to prison mentality. That's, that's what... Like you think about it, you go, you go to prison, it's like, if you look at that the right way, you go, okay, I got time to read, get my mind right, I got time to work out, get my body right. Yeah. You can come out the other side if you can remain unscathed while you're in there, which is tough to do. It's the same thing in this situation. Can you stay isolated so you can stay healthy? I keep saying to Deirdre, I feel good, I feel strong, we just gotta stay healthy. Right. You know? and, th and that's the thing, it's like all of these things that we have in our power that's what we've got to, that's, that's all we can focus on is what we can do. We can't, you know, two don't. categories, like yeah. stuff we can control, stuff we can't. Most of us burn up our energy focused on the stuff we can't control. And we have nothing left in the gas tank for influencing that, which we can Let's cut out the focus on the stuff we can't control, focus on what we can, and we'll build up the power actually to create a greater sphere of influence. And, you know, and, and then, and so then one more thing that is specifically relevant to your message, the, the research on post-traumatic stress disorder versus post-traumatic growth, first of all, most people haven't even heard of post-traumatic growth, but there's a growing field of research in the field of positive psychology, where we're actually looking at what works instead of just looking at what's, you know, pathology and what's wrong and what's broken. But the, the number one factor between whether or not someone experiences PTSD symptoms or post-traumatic growth symptoms, which are characterized by resilience and strength and wisdom and newfound zest for life and all these other positive things, is the mindset shift between, is my adversity a threat? Is it, and it's overwhelming, and that's PTSD symptoms are gonna result, or is my adversity an opportunity and a challenge? And, and if it's seen as an opportunity, so that's a question that I'm asking myself every single day, how do I emerge from the quarantine healthier body, mind, and spirit than I ever was before this even started? You know, let me just interject yeah. because I see someone wrote something and I don't want us to get cut off before I address it. Life is still very busy with kids schooling at home and parents working. Absolutely. So totally. everything that's being said is like, yes, totally. I mean, I, I'm, I'm only able to have time to do any other things because my wife is helping with the kids and she's doing more frankly than I am. Um, totally. So, that's a great point. And if you're not able to get to it, that's the other thing. There's like, there, I feel like there have been a lot of things going around about people shaming people into like, you should be so productive. You should, you know, be painting the Mona Lisa in this time. There's no, there's no guilt. It's just, this is for me, I'm going, this is what I can control. How do I make it as good as I can do it? You know, and this is, and this is something that takes no time and you can do with your kids right there and do it with them. just breathe right and that's my wife has a song and it's about choose choose and then the end it says you know sometimes you choose love choose joy choose freedom choose happiness and then if you can only choose to breathe just choose to breathe and so yes i was almost late for this because my wife was busy and i had to finish flipping my kids eggs and then i needed to go to the bathroom and then i didn't know how to set up the instagram thing and so I totally get it. Definitely don't mean to be like saying like, oh yeah, I'm just in this, you know, yogi meditation retreat here. We all have extra strains and stresses that we are not used to having. And, and we're just trying to make the best be, be as flexible as we can and playful with it and say, you know, okay, well, kids, let's do some breathing exercises together. Let's make a game of it. You know, we say, oh, let's do the Darth Vader breath. <sighs> you know, so there's, there's ways to kind of just be flexible with it. Yeah. See, I myself, per personally, I've been levitating this entire time we've been <laughs> on. I don't have a chair under me. 
I'm really, <laughs> I'm very evolved. You so, are. You just are. ask Deirdre. Yeah, I'm right totally up. evolved. Uh, right it's 11.40 p.m. in Singapore, so all good. Happy to be on here. That is so awesome that someone is from cool. Singapore. Are you the person that, that wrote to me, like, uh, that listens to the podcast and wrote in? This is very cool. Somebody, somebody wrote in a couple of weeks ago, and actually, I, I owe her a shout out. Um, so maybe that I, I can't remember if this is the same person, but that's pretty cool. Think about that. I mean, there's not a lot of people here, but there's someone in Singapore. Oh, yeah, that's her. All right. I'm going to go check the name and the emails, and you will definitely get a shout out. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry that I forget the name right now. Um, but this is this is awesome, Mike. And, and, and another thing, and we'll probably get cut off. So thank yeah. you, everybody. I'm yeah. just going to say, you look at Mike, he's got the glasses and the beard and the and the gray and white. He looks like this professor who's out in New Mexico. <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, he's he's like, he's doing this, but he's evolved. He's been all this stuff. He's a kid <laughs> from Boston who was playing hockey when I met him. So Total you know what I mean? Like, there is room for growth and change and all of that. Like, like you, you know what I mean? I just, I want to say that because I feel like it's it's important to, to you know. The only reason I use these is because I started doing so many video conferencing. These are blue blockers. These aren't even prescription glasses. This is the blocking blue light. I'm on, I'm on the freaking video eight hours a day now. And I'm like, ah, my eyes. That's so funny. But anyway, yeah, I just think that's kind of like an important thing to say. It's like, you know, everybody is, is, is at a certain point right now, but they didn't just they didn't just start there. Like Mike has put in and go listen, I'm, I'm going to put it if I didn't already, I'll put a link. I don't think I can do a swipe up from 10,000 no speed because I don't have enough followers there. But I did it, I think, from the at Maddie Dell feed. And if I didn't, I'll do it again and just put a swipe up to the link. You can listen to our interview from, I think, last year. Uh, it, was, it was really pretty awesome. And like I said, it, it got a ton of listens. So, um, Mike Boyle, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mike. Everybody go follow him. It's at Michael Boyle Wholehearted. I think it's probably on there on your thing. And, um, and, and I don't... Thing, Oh, I that? might change this because Matt has, Matt has hazed me about not doing enough social media, but um, I don't spend as much time on, on Instagram. So it's Michael Boyle. At Energy of Mind is the Facebook page. And that's where I'm doing free live classes and free guided meditations and stuff like that. So check that out at Energy of Mind. This uh, Ryan Harris. Thanks so much, guys. You're welcome. And um, yeah, and this makes me think I should do these even more often with different people and shorter just like boom it should be that, yeah you know, i mean not that i need one more thing to do but it does seem pretty easy and you know you get a couple people listening so right thank on, you man. mike it's awesome man great, great to see you give the best of the family all right likewise to yours all right see you man later